you've probably heard about Schrodinger's cat. You know, the one that's both dead and alive. But have you ever wondered how a cat can be both dead and alive? No? Well, today you're going to learn about it. Yes, this is a video about Bitcoin and cats, the two most important things on the internet. What you're about to hear could change how you look at Bitcoin and reality forever. All right, so let's talk about Schrodinger's famous cat experiment. This has been a long time coming. I've been looking forward to making this video. Let's get into it. Austrian physicist Erwin Schrodinger is one of the founders of quantum mechanics, but is most famous for a thought experiment involving a cat. Here's how it goes. He imagined taking a cat, locking it in a sealed box and adding a device that had a 50% chance of killing the cat within the next hour. Yeah, being a 20th century physicist seemed to be a lot of fun. You invented big bombs and the world's most anxiety-ridden pets. Then he asked, after that hour, what's the state of the cat? Your gut instinct probably says it's either dead or alive. But Schrodinger pointed out that according to the rules of quantum physics, right before you open the box, the cat is both dead and alive at the same time, existing in a weird quantum limbo, simultaneously a pet and a ghost. Now Schrodinger didn't come up with this idea just to terrorize cats. Probably. His daughter once said though, I think my dad just hates cats. Now I can neither confirm nor deny that, but I do know this. The point of Schrodinger's thought experiment was not really to support quantum mechanics, but rather to show the absurdity of it. To show just how bizarre reality can be when you look under the hood. The crazy part, if we take quantum math seriously, it tells us something deeply uncomfortable about reality. And this is what it tells us. Until you open the box, the cat isn't dead or alive. It's both. At the same time. The point was that he wanted to illustrate the absurdity of a concept known as superposition. A strange thing that goes on in the quantum part of reality. Where a thing can be in two places or in two opposing states at the same time, like a cat being both dead and alive. And here's an interesting fact. Schrodinger found quantum physics so philosophically disturbing that he eventually abandoned the theory that he helped make and turned to biology, which is much less spooky. Let's take an example. At any given time, a planet orbiting a star has a fixed position and spins in one direction. It follows the rules of gravity, no surprises there. But if we zoom in and keep zooming in on this unsuspecting person, we will soon see the first microscopic structures of the universe. Cells, fibers, molecules and atoms. And if we go even deeper, we eventually get to the quantum level and this is where things start to get weird. Take an electron. Unlike a planet, it doesn't have a fixed position or fixed spin. Instead, it's everywhere and nowhere at once. It sounds absurd, because it is. But it is also what the math tells us. The problem is that our intuition about reality just isn't aligned with how things actually work. And here is where it gets even crazier. There's a theory called the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, and it takes this to a whole new level. According to this idea, when we open the box, we don't just collapse the wave function and force reality to decide if the cat is dead or alive. Instead, the entire universe splits in two. In one universe, the cat is alive, and in another, it's dead. Both of these universes are equally real, but they branch off and become separate from one another, these two realities. So when we open the box, we can only perceive the universe that we end up in. The other one becomes like a parallel dimension, an upside down world we can never access. But it exists, and it's just as real as this one. Yeah, this is the best understanding of the universe that we currently have. The universe isn't just stranger than we imagine, it's stranger than we can imagine.
Now that we've explored some cool stuff about quantum mechanics, let's see how Bitcoin fits into all of this. Let's start with ownership. Bitcoin already from the get-go forces us to rethink what ownership even means. Like at a philosophical level, if you know a private key, you own the funds in the address that that private key unlocks. Imagine this, uh, you and a friend both know the private key to, a, to an address. So who really owns the funds? Is it both of you? Neither of you? In a way, it's like Schrodinger's cat. The ownership is in a kind of superposition. Both of you own the funds in that address and also neither of you. But that's only until one of you interacts with the system and makes a move and moves the funds. That's when you open the box and collapse the superposition of the ownership. The ownership is now in a single definite state. One person owns the funds and the other one doesn't. And here's something even more mind-blowing. The entire blockchain, the entire Bitcoin time chain is in a state of superposition. Not of ownership, but of information. Think about it. At any given moment, the blockchain holds countless possible futures. And every time a new block is mined, the wave function of the blockchain collapses into a single shared reality. But you shouldn't feel too bad if you're a miner and you didn't find a block. Because in another universe, you did. You just happened to, to draw the short quantum straw in this reality. The act of finding a block forces the entire network to decide on a single shared outcome, pulling the blockchain out of its fog of possibilities and locking in one definite state. Bitcoin forces us to reconsider the nature of ownership, where control is no longer just about physical possession, but about information, about what you know. And it's not just wallets that exist in this strange quantum state, it's the entire blockchain. Before a new block is mined, the blockchain itself exists in a superposition of countless possible futures, with every unmined block representing a different potential version of reality. Every time a miner finds a block, this collapses the superposition, and creates reality. We could have ended up in any of the possible versions of history, but we ended up in this one. The other versions of reality that could have played out, they exist too, but we're no longer part of them. The reason that I think that all of this matters is because the future of money, like quantum mechanics, might be stranger than we think. In the making of this video, I started thinking about Bitcoin and quantum mechanics, how to draw parallels between them and find uh, quantum mechanical properties of Bitcoin, which to turn out to be quite a few. But more importantly, I stumbled upon a new insight about what Bitcoin is. And it's a fascinating one. And here it is. At its core, Bitcoin is a living quantum experiment in consensus where uncertainty collapses into reality through collective agreement. This, to me, is a fascinating idea what Bitcoin is. So what do you think? Does this change how you look at ownership? Or even reality itself? Because looking at reality through a quantum mechanical lens certainly has had a profound impact on my relationship with reality. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more mind-bending content about money and future technology and philosophy. So until next time, stay curious. Peace out. Get your copy of Yoni's book, Abundance Through Scarcity, in the description below.